Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So Ron DeSantis, it is so over for Team DeSantis. It's over for the campaign that was supposed to go out there and take down Donald Trump once and for all and never back down from a fight. Well, Apparently, some fights may be best back down from, and we're seeing this in real time. As another poll has been released, it's not the only poll we're even going to talk about today, that shows Donald Trump in Ohio at 64% of the primary vote, and DeSantis, he's not even in second place, he's not even in double digits, he's at 9%, he is three points above Mike Pence for fourth place, and he is being outpaced by some guy named Vivek Ramaswamy, who some people in the audience may still have no idea who that is. Nobody really knew who he was, you know, seven months ago when he initially announced his campaign, but he has gotten himself into second place. And that's crazy because DeSantis is somebody that a lot of people viewed as America's governor. He's getting some things done, even if some of those things are a little bit overhyped by conservative media. But still, a lot of people liked him. I liked a lot of what I had seen in terms of the media, even though I knew that some of it was just headlines. And yeah, obviously, I've been saying for almost three years now that just because you're a good governor, it doesn't make you a good president. I never supported DeSantis over Trump. I never really believed that DeSantis would be more electable than Donald Trump in the states that counted. And that doesn't even take things like his national voting record or his lack of charisma into account, but it's true. And Trump in Ohio, some people will say Ohio is like a uniquely pro-Trump state. He didn't even win the primary there in 2016 for the record, although we will say that that was largely because of the current governor, then current governor, I should say, of Ohio, also in the running. But still, nationally, DeSantis is failing out here. Donald Trump, in some recent polling, he has a 44-point lead, 43-point lead, 40-point lead. In the, in the four most recent polls, he has a 40-point lead in three of those polls. It shows that his support is solidifying. His support is increasing. Or not just that, DeSantis' support tends to be falling, and you're seeing people like Vivek Ramaswamy get into third place nationally. You're seeing Tim Scott surge in places like South Carolina into second place. He's surging in Iowa and New Hampshire, and maybe the establishment's going to rally behind him. It just shows that the DeSantis campaign has no idea what they're doing, and they're doubling down on the worst elements of his campaign because their only conviction is, oh, we got to own those MAGA people on Twitter. We got to own people like Red Eagle Politics who are objectively analyzing the race. And as a result, the whole like electability or the independence argument for Ron DeSantis, oh, well, he does better with independence than Trump. Really? Because he's doing worse than Trump against Biden in every single poll. And some polls show that he's hitting record low favorable numbers. He had an above water favorable rating. But now, since December, when it was 50-50, essentially, he's underwater in civics by 24 points. And you could say, well, that might be an outlier. The other polls show the same thing, even if it is to a lesser degree. And he had a plus nine among independents back in December. Right now, he's down 25 points with independents. His campaign's firing people. It's insane right now what's going on there. They're thinking that that is going to revitalize or reboot the campaign, but they've been rebooting for several months now to really no success. And as a result, it's crazy what's going on. It's just insanity that people really thought that they would stand a chance to take on Trump. Even if you're going to sit here and say, well, you know, I like some of what DeSantis has done as governor. I think that Trump is, you know had his shot, he's getting older or whatever, he's still the best option objectively. The voters see it. And these were some swayable people because after the midterms, yeah, people bought into the media, the GOP establishment lie that Trump was responsible for the underperformance. But as time went on, 
it really just proves that not only is that overblown and the establishment is more to blame, but that same establishment has egged on DeSantis to run. They've surrounded him with all the worst people, and that's their plot to get rid of Trump. And even if you want to say, well, DeSantis has good intentions, he's not in on the plot, well, he's ceded a lot of his ground in terms of how the campaign is run to these same people. These people that were supposed to go out there, take on Trump, they're competent. Yeah, how's that working out for you? You're so competent that you're polling at 18% right now. That's like your record low. Even before the midterms, we saw DeSantis polling at 23-24. And now Donald Trump is arguably one of his biggest leads that we've seen in this Republican primary field. And that's very true. You're looking at this right here, right now. And they double down on all the worst things. They don't understand optics whatsoever. And they're trying to, like, run to Trump's right on certain things, despite DeSantis, like, also doing some liberal things in terms of the things that they're trying to run to the right on. And then they're going to sit there and say, look at me, we're the real conservative. But also then they're going to claim to be the whole, like, oh, we're going to win all the independents. We're, like, super far right. And it's funny, they're posting like memes now that have like the black sun imagery in them like these DeSantis hype edits and that's like a symbol that's used by the Azov battalion it's a symbol that's used by like Nazis and stuff and it's like they just don't understand optics they don't understand what's really going to pull primary voters over to their side and now they're attacking some of the most conservative members of Congress because they're calling him out they're calling him out because of optics because DeSantis released his educational standards. And yes, they were taken out of context by the liberal media, but that doesn't exactly matter here because what you saw was you had these standards that were released and they talked about slavery and how slaves learned these benefits that, that helped them in the future. And it was a benefit that they were able to do so. And it's like, you understand when you word it that way, it's going to be taken out of context by these people. It's going to be taken out of context by the media. They're going to run with that. They're going to say, you're praising slavery, even though it is true that, yes, slaves learned certain skills that did help them get jobs in factories, although you could argue that they learned them as free individuals or free people also learn them. It doesn't exactly matter. What I will say is the optics are not good. And he's being attacked because people know that the optics are not good, including Byron Donalds, who is a Trump surrogate, one of the most conservative members of Congress. We know that. He challenged Kevin McCarthy for the speakership because McCarthy was insufficient. And he obviously fell short, but the standoff definitely helped mold McCarthy and make him better than initially expected. But either way, it just shows that there's a lot of self-inflicted wounds that are coming from this administration down in Florida, that are coming from this campaign, that claims to be the competent choice, and then they will waste all of their energy and resources, and they'll run with the same NPC-style talking points. You're Kamala Harris now. You're Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris was like one of the few people to point this out, and it's like, seriously, you're missing the point. The point is, is that it's a self-inflicted wound. That's all it really stems from. It doesn't really matter if they're going to twist it. Of course they're going to twist it. Of course they're going to lie about it. We've been up against these people for over half a decade now, if you've been paying attention. That's how they deal with these certain things. And the DeSantis people are not effectively fighting back against it. And they're being called out by Florida congressmen and a lot of different people. And they're going to waste all this time and energy attacking Byron Donalds, who is one of the greatest congressmen that we have. I wouldn't say he's like top 10, but is he like top 25? Yeah, in many people's eyes, he is top 10 because they probably just don't know that many congressmen. But either way, he's up there. He is objectively solid. One of the best in the Florida delegation, for sure. And on top of that, Biden's administration has shifting their focus because they know now that this campaign is so incompetent because a lot of DeSantis people were saying, well, Biden wants to run against Trump. 
And maybe some people in his administration did because they believe that, oh, well, 2020, we already saw that Biden's an incumbent. Trump's older now. Maybe he would give us the best shot. But now that they're looking at DeSantis, they're looking into DeSantis and they're seeing how incompetent his campaign is being run. Now they want to run against DeSantis because they know that Biden, despite being this guy in his mid 80s, senile, demented, they know that Biden would stand a very, very good chance and a greater chance at taking out Ron DeSantis instead of somebody like Donald Trump because Trump knows that he's looking to 2020 and 2022. He's understanding that Republicans have had issues there regarding turnout and he's willing to you know shift his strategy around and his messaging is pretty good for the most part, I would say, especially when he's talking about current issues and when he's talking about taking on Biden. He has very good messaging. DeSantis is getting up there in front of like a crowd of 25 people and rambling about some educational jargon about ESG or whatever remedial thing he's done in Florida. And it's like, can the average person even really relate to that? And when, you know, they're going to be attacking DeSantis on policy, and they will twist it, I'm sure, like they did the educational thing, but it's not a good look. They'll hit him on abortion. You talk about the suburbs, and they're going to be hitting him for things like wanting to cut Social Security and Medicare in Congress. That's what did in Blake Masters more so than anything else. Obviously, money was a big problem, but you look at the fact that he brought up Social Security and Medicare. That hurt him more than any controversial statement he made on any other issue or anything that he wrote about in college. Make no mistake about it. They're going to be hitting him on trade. Biden's going to position himself as the economic populist if he runs up against Ron DeSantis, make no mistake. And he will do so likely successfully in a place like Pennsylvania, Michigan, or Wisconsin. I'm not saying he's going to like win over large portions of uh, these voters that voted for Donald Trump. But what I'm saying is, yeah, he likely will do better than he did the first time, more so enough to win those states, and you will see turnout among Trump's base in those places drop. So Biden is being more afraid right now of Donald Trump, and he wants to run. His allies, I should say. Biden doesn't even know who Ron DeSantis is. He probably doesn't even know who he is at this point, but his allies, his associates, they want to run against DeSantis now because they understand he's collapsing. His approval rating is worse than Donald Trump, his disapproval rating grows the more that people get acquainted with him, including independent voters. What does this set up? This sets up absolute failure, and this is something that Republican primary voters are taking into account because they're realizing that Donald Trump, not only is he the biggest threat to the system still, not only is he the most solid on all of the issues, especially those national issues that are unique to the national level. He is also the most electable choice. That is why they're launching these investigations into him. That's why they're trying to take him down. That's why Biden is acting like a third world leader, a third world dictator. If this was happening in any other country, if Putin was investigating uh, some remedial opposition party leader, we would look at this and we would say, hey, look, that's illegitimate, whatever's going on there, that's corruption. But here it's completely fine. Here it's completely warranted because Biden is from the side of the political aisle. He is from the uniparty that controls the narrative. But you know what? A lot of people are waking up. A lot of people are fighting against it. Make no mistake, it's not going to be a cakewalk in 2024 in the general election. Doesn't mean we can't win it. But I will say the primary Trump is, he's cooking, and DeSantis is cooked. I will say that very much. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.